Profiles and Issues is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It is a show that profiles people and issues that affect the church in the modern world. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to this edition of Profiles and Issues. I'm Father Jim Corda. Our issue today is immigration and English as a second language. Joining me in profiling this issue is Sister Marianne McFadden. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our show today. Thank you, I'm, I'm happy to be here. What, what I'd like us to start talking about mm -hmm. initially is, is I, I heard recently that people are much more accepting of immigration and immigrants now than they ever have been. Is there a reason why people are much more accepting nowadays? I'm not sure what the reason is, and there are probably many reasons. Um, I, I think one thing, uh, and I know from my own experience, uh, the more people who come into our neighborhoods and into our cities, uh, the more we realize they're there, and whether we want to or not, the more, the more we get to know them. Uh, and uh, some of what might put us off, like uh, if you look at a Hispanic person very often, their eyes will be cast down. And, and you might think that that's uh, being unfriendly, but they're just, they're, they're very simple per people and they're oftentimes um, shy. And so uh, once that shyness is overcome, people get to know them and, and see how uh, simple, how kind, uh, how um, friendly they are. So uh, at least through my experience and the people in my city, it seems to me as though the, the more they get to know them and see that they're not taking their jobs away uh, and uh, uh, meet their children who go to the schools, the more they become part of us. And, you know, there's that whole uh, 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 issue of language. Oh, yes. You know? And I'm sure oh, yes. that that's a somewhat a barrier for, for them and, and for those who do not speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, so how important is that, that communication oh. uh, in, in the whole immigration uh, issue? Okay. Um, I think it's, it's a very big issue, uh, but it's also a very complex issue. Uh, we, at, at uh, our church, we do teach ESL, English as a Second Language. And uh, what we find, uh, we work mostly with the adults. What we find is that, uh, number one, the adults often have little experience of education, uh, depending on where they come from. It's very hard for them to learn, very hard. Uh, in our town, and this I think is true across the country, uh, our town is a small town, um, not real well known. Uh, the children, as they go to school, they learn English. So the children are learning English, a uh, little bit speaking English in the home. The parents are speaking Spanish, but we're pretty much first, or, well, pretty much first generation. As uh, uh, the, the, the Hispanic people become a second and third generation, the, the problem of English is, is, and Spanish is not going to be nearly the prop, problem that I think we find it is today. I'm wondering also, and, and I've heard this uh, with those who work with uh, immigrants, uh, mm -hmm. especially the Hispanic, uh, that there's different cultures that are involved. So it's mm -hmm. not just um, oh, yes. immigrants from Cuba, or not just Mexico, but mm -hmm. uh, Latin America, Central America. How difficult is that whole sense of looking at the different cultures in trying to meet the needs? Are the needs different? Uh, communications yes. different? Explain some of that. Yes, uh, and I can only speak through the experience that I've had. Uh, where, where I come from, we have mostly Guatemalans, um, we have some Mexicans, and then we have uh, a few from Argentina and uh, El Salvador and so on. Uh, the two big groups I work with are, in, are uh, uh, folks from Guatemala and from Mexico. 
there's a big difference. Uh, the, the Mexican uh, folks are usually more educated. Uh, they know English or they pick it up much faster than the Guatemalans. Uh, whereas the Guatemalan people are uh, uh, very hard workers. You know, they, they will work in the fields or they'll work in uh, a factory uh, where it's damp and cool or hot and blistering. They'll think nothing of it. Uh, so getting to know the Hispanic people is not just, you know, one big, um, uh, uh, what shall I say, group. It, it really, in my experience at least, depends on, or it's very important to get the individual uh, groups and their culture, uh, um, get them into your vocabulary and your understanding. Let's talk a little bit more uh, in broader terms now mm -hmm. of what exactly we mean by immigration. What are we talking about? Is it similar to when uh, people came from like Italy or the Slavic countries in the 40s and 50s, or mm -hmm. is it different now? It's, it, is there comparisons that we can make or contrasts? Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good question, and actually I don't, I don't know that much about the reasons why people in the past uh, immigrated to the United States. Uh, it seems to me as though um, poverty, uh, poverty that we don't even know is a huge reason. Education is a reason. Because of the poverty, uh, the children often in uh, Central America, at least oftentimes, don't go to school. They go to the fields. Um, and so they, they grow up with very little, if any, education at all. And parents want, of course, better for their children. Uh, um, uh, violence in the cities, gangs in the cities, uh, those are huge reasons why people cross the borders either um, legally or, un or illegally. And, mm -hmm. and we really don't have to get into that mm -hmm. conversation about the legality right. of it all. Those, those are for the um, government to I deal agree. with those things. I agree. But, but let's talk practically about when, when an immigrant comes, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, to, to your particular area, what are some of the first things that you do to assist them? What, what would be some of the basic needs mm -hmm. that they have that you provide? Okay. First thing is usually housing. Uh, and at the point when they come, they don't have much money. Uh, we're lucky to have uh, some people in our community who are willing to... Uh, to rent at a very, a very minimal uh, uh, price so that they can afford it. Uh, that's the first thing, education. Uh, although many of the folks in our area have very young children, so it hasn't been until more recently that we've had to get them into uh, elementary school or even middle school, but education is a big thing. Uh, uh, probably <laughs> the other really big item is is connecting them to doctors, dentists, providing transportation. Uh, the Guatemalans, for example, in our area, uh, the, their culture says that women don't drive. And so uh, we provide transportation for them. Um, and, and then just things like going to the store, they have to have, going to Walmart, for example, they have to have translators at first, unless their children are, are old enough and can translate. Um, those are some of the things that they, that they really need help with. Um, and then, oh, there's, there's just so many other little things that you don't think of. For example, uh, um, how to run a vacuum cleaner. They've probably never seen one before. Uh, microwave, in, in many cases, is new to them. Um, uh, cooking, buying food, finding food that they and their families can eat and, and enjoy. Uh, in our city, we now have three small Guatemalan stores. And so uh, all three of those, they sell Mexican and Guatemalan food so they can get food there. 
um, uh, trying to uh, work with all the paperwork, uh, trying to get, uh, for example, a birth certificate or uh, a certificate of um, immunization from their native country is very difficult. They don't keep records like we do. Those are some some of the, the the things they don't they don't look ahead and realize that they're going to have to have warm clothes during winter and then different kind of clothes during the spring and summer. Um, they're used to wearing the same clothes all the time. We're, Those we're, are some of the things. We're getting down to the last <clears throat> few minutes of our first okay. segment together. Mm -hmm. Those are very practical things that that we would see as second hand. That's we, right. Those are things that we grew up knowing and understanding and just yes. just wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, and how difficult it is to uh, teach those things to adults, I would think, would be difficult. Very Especially difficult. when the language barrier is present. Um, so it, it seems to me that you had mentioned education, and I think mm -hmm. that's probably critical it is. Uh, with the young people to, to get uh, an education that benefits them but it also benefits their parents yes whose probably primary goal is to get them as you had mentioned educated to look for a decent job mm -hmm. um, to be able to provide down the road um, so, so there's a lot of practical things that are involved those people that work with you um, those people that are part of the community or part of the parish mm -hmm. that work with you are they taught to do certain things? Are they, do they have to learn themselves how to work with immigrants? Definitely. We've all had to learn, uh, and, and we continue to learn. New, new things come every day. Here's one tiny example. A lady came, uh, an older woman. She wanted to be able to uh, write her name. That was her goal. She didn't know how to hold a pencil. Now, that's kind of unusual. Most of them do, but uh, she wasn't the only one that we've had that experience with. So we learn to not assume anything. Well, mm -hmm. we're going to take a break in a moment, but okay. before we do, what I'd like you to uh, give to the folks that are uh, listening uh, when we go to break, mm -hmm. something to think about uh, when they might encounter someone who is an immigrant, whether it's in the store or in the community, or what one phrase or one word would you share with them to understand in being able to relate to them? This is what came to my mind. Um, to be aware of the fact that that man or that woman or that child, they are our brothers and sisters. And uh, they want to know you more than you want to know them. So don't be afraid to take the first step. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our show. I'm talking with Sister Marianne McFadden on the issue of immigration and English as a second language. I'd like to focus on that uh, ESL aspect okay. because communication and language is so, um, so uh, important for us as human beings, but I think more importantly as, as, uh, as people of faith mm -hmm. to be able to communicate. 
and in a little bit we'll talk about how we uh, share faith with immigrants, but let's talk about English as a second language, yes. how crucial that is. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that, that you are involved with to help them understand and learn English? Well, from day one, um, seven years ago, when uh, I came to our parish, we began offering ESL classes. Uh, first, we went into the homes into a home and tried to gather people together and then it moved to the school and now uh, we we offer ESL classes every Sunday uh, for two hours and we go all year long. Um, uh, it, it, it is very important. Um, uh, I myself speak some Spanish but I don't speak it well enough to really converse or, or if somebody has a problem they're trying to explain. Um, I always have to go and get someone else to help interpret. Well, I have to do that once in a while. They have to do it all the time, all the time. If they, got, if they get a telephone call, um, they, it, and if it's in English, they, they can't answer, they can't respond. If they want to call me, for example, or someone, and ask for um, transportation to a doctor. Oftentimes, I'll have someone call me on the phone, and I'll answer the phone, and I'll say hello, and there will be silence. They don't, they don't know how to respond in English, and they're afraid to respond in, in Spanish. So, uh, uh, it, just every, you know, every moment of the day, practically. Uh -huh. And I would imagine, uh, and they say for, for adults, learning a new language is difficult. It's very difficult. And, and, and I would imagine for someone who does not have uh, an educational background, mm -hmm. it makes it even more difficult. Yes. Uh, and let's talk about English a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, English is, um, is really not a difficult language to learn, but the grammar is so, so intricate uh, mm -hmm. How does that all work with, with uh, teaching English as a second language? Well, um, actually, in many ways, English is a, a hard language to learn. Uh, for example, we, we use many, um, many terms uh, or words that have different meanings. And so uh, if, if I say something like, um, no, I probably won't be able to think of anything. Uh, kind of a stupid example, but it's raining cats and dogs. They know what a cat is, and they might know what a dog is, but they have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, so it can be difficult. Um, yes, it's very hard as, as adults to learn. Um, the, other, the other thing is, uh, I. It's taken me, and it continues to take me a long time to understand what it means, and I, I'm, still, I, I'm, I'm sure I still don't understand, but to understand what it means to come to education or come to a classroom having no experience in your culture even, no experience of, of education or very little, um, the, to study, you know, what does that mean? And in, in most cases, uh, they don't have time to study. And so you have them maybe, as we do, for a couple hours a week. Uh, the, only, the only hope of, of having them use that English that they learned Sunday morning is maybe, well, at work probably, um, they'll maybe get enough courage uh, to use their their new English words with the people they work with, um, uh, so so practicing what they're learning is is difficult is challenging. Um, uh, they need a lot of review. Um, you asked about grammar. Uh, yeah, we, we hardly at first we even hardly deal with grammar. We teach vocabulary. Uh, we, treat, we try to, to work with phonics. So, uh, for example, if, to try to help them understand that there's a letter B and there's a sound 
B, so that the next time they see that B, which they know from their own al alphabet is a B, uh, they'll know that it has a certain sound. They don't know that ahead of time. Uh, uh, the, other, the other thing, and probably the biggest challenge for us, is that uh, the folks oftentimes are not able to come regularly. So they, they come and, and they're there for two hours and they learn 20 new words or they learn a pattern of how to say a, a simple sentence like, I like uh, food, you know, I like cake, whatever. Um, they, they come and they learn that uh, and then they go back into their world, which is busy taking care of families, busy working, uh, sleeping if they have time. Uh, they, they have, they are, their lives are very busy. Their lives are very busy. And to find time to practice speaking to one another, um, that gift of time is not always there for them. So it takes a, a long time for them to begin to feel any kind of ease in speaking. Let's English. talk about the, um, the, the faith aspect of it all. Because mm -hmm. obviously uh, mm -hmm. many of the immigrants, is, at least the Hispanics, are, are Catholics yes. that come uh, to the States. What do you do and what do we do uh, in providing faith and celebrations of sacraments with them? especially with the language barrier, even though, you know, that uh, the worship transcends that, mm -hmm. but, but still, how important is sharing that faith oh. and enabling them to participate in the celebrations of the Mass, oh. for example? It, 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 is, it is so important. Their faith is, is deep and their faith is uh, so important and essential to them. Uh, so how do, we, how do we help them or how do we reach out to them? Uh, the most important thing, and I think this is being done in many, many areas in the United States, is, is to, at least in the beginning to provide them with uh, a Spanish mass, mass w which is um, uh, presided over by a, a pastor or a priest that can speak Spanish, um, hearing uh, a homily in their own words, in their own language, is so very important to them. Uh, celebrating the sacraments, we, we have many baptisms, uh, uh, again, all in Spanish. Um, we invite them to come to our Anglo masses where English is spoken, and some do, uh, but um, they, they need, just like we would, just as we would, they, they need their own language to feel that comfort. And of course, that's who they, that's, they speak to their God in their language, and he understands all those languages. Uh, so it's very important. What we do at our parish, because we, we don't have, um, uh, we don't have people that, that speak Spanish real fluently, uh, we try to find others, uh, for example, uh, uh, in, in a city not too far away from us, uh, we have a couple people that have been willing to um, uh, meet the folks in an RCIA setting. Uh, so for example, right now in, in my parish, we have children who are, are over the age of seven or eight where they would have received their first communion and, and they haven't received it yet. We have them involved in this RCIA, and um, uh, they come every week or every other week, and they learn about the sacrament. And the children work with one of the, um, with the mother of the, the couple that helps us, and then the father of that couple, he meets with the parents, and they, uh, they share scripture, they, they share concerns, it's all in Spanish at this point. They, they need it in Spanish. So, so obviously, uh, needs are being met. And, and I think that's, that's kind of a, a fundamental thing that we need to understand, that, that while we're trying to meet the needs of, of immigrants, 
we still have a long ways to go. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and there are certain barriers that, that we need to overcome, but, but can be overcome. And I, and I think what we need to do, and you could speak more clearly about this, is that whole element of, of being hopeful Oh. In, in all of that. How mm -hmm. important is that virtue when we're talking about uh, some of the struggles in allowing people to uh, be part of, of who we are in the United States who come from different countries who don't know our customs or language? How important is that element of hope? Uh, uh, you know, you don't usually, I, I don't usually think of, of hope in terms of the whole immigration scene, but but I think it's very important. I think we, as those people who are receiving the immigrants, I think we have to trust that, um, that, that these people, uh, they're not only coming here for themselves and their children, but they're coming here because they have, they have much hope and, and they trust that they're gonna be welcomed that uh, they'll be able to, to um, live uh, with the basic necessities, um, that their children will be able to grow up in a free land. Freedom is so big for them. Um, so, so yes, for us, uh, hope is important. And for the folks that come here, um, they do have hope. And if they lose it, I think sometimes we're to blame. Um, and I think, I think the most important thing is, is love. They're like we are. Uh, the culture may be different, the language may be different. They want the same things that we do. Um, they want to, to uh, see their children uh, be happy. They want their family life to, to grow and be rich. Um, they want to be accepted, they want to belong, they want to be able to, to, uh, uh, to express and experience their faith in our country. Um, so, um, you know, it, really it's very simple. It's not maybe easy, but it's very simple. If we can just open our hearts uh, and, and want to love them and accept them, I think we'll find out that uh, in many ways, they're going to give more to us than we sometimes give to them. Well, Sister Mary Ann McFadden, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Have a good day me. and God be with you. Profiles and Issues was a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.